shit, dude. We back. Episode two. Episode two, and we're back. Welcome back. We didn't, we daily didn't drop two. off uh, episode again, one. Dude. It wasn't a um, five minutes of fame. We, like, we survived. The sun. We didn't uh, burn up too quick, you know. And no one, like a meteor didn't burn out the planet in between them That's now. Exactly so yeah, right. we survived. Um, <laughs> welcome back. i got to make sure I don't call I it. I burned too bright. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Welcome to episode two, Double Dose Podcast. Thank you for having us. All right. <laughs> Uh, what's been Do you going want to take on, it dude? off, Dan? Do you want to take it off? Um, so, well, I mean, you know. How's your uh, week been? Yeah, good, man. Yeah? Um, not doing that much. You know what? I've just been watching some TV. Yep, yep. Um, and uh, getting buff at the gym. Very nice. Check out the pea shooters. Boom, boom, boom. Bam! Careful. Uh, I actually got a license to carry these bad boys, you we know? We actually had a bit of a tough time framing Dan in the shot. Yeah, because um, my bicep Yeah, we couldn't get him and the guns involved. Um, would not fit. There was not enough pixels. Yeah, yeah. There. I went the opposite route, dude. I, I, I did the bulking, but without the shre- the, the <laughs> training, so just a lot of eating. Nah, dude, you're looking good. <laughs> Thank you. appreciate it, man. Um, no. Uh, you know what? I've been watching Moon Knight. Yeah. Um, you watched it? I've watched one episode. Um... I yeah. Uh, there's only two episodes out right now. Two, three. I think there's uh, there's three. three. I haven't three. seen uh, at the time of recording this. There is three. I think maybe four. I think yeah. But I've watched two. I've watched one. Um. Well, so far so great. Uh. But I was a little let down of the special effects, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just I kept getting taken out because there was just so much heavy use of green screen. Um. Especially. I mean. I mean. You know. If you do intend to watch it. And it's still too soon for you. Spoiler warning. Um, we're going to talk about a scene uh, from Moon Knight, season one, episode one. We'll but, mention when there's a spoiler. Yeah, we'll pop up on screen when the spoiler when the spoiler ends. What what time to jump cut to? But uh, anyway, uh, the scene, the whole scene with the uh, shootout in the in the the little ice cream van. Um, I just could not get involved because I just kept oh, seeing this um, digital yeah, the rocks, camera. The rocks on the um. Uh, like falling and, oh and uh, just like the the you know CG camera rotating from the driver to the back to yeah. the front and uh, and and everyone just being like placed in and none of the background you know it was it almost looked to the point of like how those old school movies had the big projector behind the cam- uh, behind the car showing footage of moving oh uh, yeah um it was like that and it was very distracting and um I don't know there's several moments where I just was like you know what I would really prefer um just focus on the story rather than trying to wow me with action, even though obviously we are watching a superhero uh, franchise. Yeah, I think there, there's, t- uh, well, well, how I see it is there's just so much that they have to get in week to week. Yeah. It's, well, I, I, I don't know, you know, they probably filmed it for, uh, I'd say probably a year at least. Yeah. Filming, editing, getting people getting the special effects done early, but then to release it 40 minutes of content and keep it in budget and, you know, amount of green screen work. I imagine the amount of CGI and stuff they're having to fix in post. Does that do this? Yes, Is that's it, it. That's right. You post? do do this. You work on this sort of stuff. I mean, you know, what? It's. I think my gripe more comes from like, I know they got the budget. Um, they're huge. And it's very strange to see a big screen s- character translate to you know episodic tv shows and have the physical um quality change from budget to from from you know blockbuster hit on the big screen to um on your local on your tv and you can physically see the change of um quality and and, and it's hard to translate because you know you're like used to seeing this over polished yeah yeah well uh, it's it's tough because you've got yeah you've got to get this amount of content out and of of course it's never going to be the same as you know uh, Mar- uh, Marvel's massive movies mm. and and all this so it's just going to never be at that level no matter what you do yeah um so it's just a shame that you know they they're wanting to put all this big budget stuff in there when it's clearly not meant to be yeah because usually like with these types of shows and not 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 superhero shows specifically but you know any uh drama or teen drama or something that starts off with that will need special effects like a teen wolf or something like that or true blood 
um, you could see the massive budget jumps from yep. season one to season four, and you could see the special effects just, you know, and that's because, you know, it's it's being done honestly. It's getting a following. It's getting the budget, more and more budget allowance each year to really take on big um, big stunts and big effects. And you would um you would just you know you 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 picture since Disney is doing this not because people are asking for it but they're like we can make money off of this put the budget in it. Yeah, I guess, but I just couldn't imagine the budget. Like you have to think if it's forty minutes an episode and they're looking for ten minutes. Yeah, that's three hundred minutes of of content. Oh no, four hundred minutes of content that they have to make or more. Yeah, and that's just would just blow out more budget than um. You know, all the Marvel movies probably combined in yeah, one yeah. thing. I get you. I get you. It's like, yeah, you're getting like a, a, a movie and a sequel, time limit wise, all in one. You're not liking yeah. the pop filter? No, I saw the levels are looking pretty low, so I'm just adjusting. Oh, and uh, for those listeners that are watching the show, um, we're still f- sorting out some uh, visual uh, issues with our camera. Um, so, you know, there might be a small little cut at uh, one or two points in the podcast, but. We'll get it sorted and, uh, you know, d- lent down the track. We'll get that sorted out so it yep. doesn't keep happening to us. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Not good that, man. Yeah. But, look, overall, uh, it's okay. Yeah. I like the, the concept and I like the, I guess, darkness of it. But I'm not sure if it's my favorite. I'm a, I'm a big fan of – is it Oscar Isaac? Yeah. I'm a big fan of him. Um, for – for those of you listening, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Um, I'm not a purist. I love it all. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. do with that information what you will. If you want to go crazy in the comments um, arguing, go for it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I really do it, do enjoy the sequel trilogy as well. And um, Oscar Isaac was great in that. I love Poe Dameron. And uh, he's, a, he's a good actor. He's, a, he's done a, quite a lot of, um, I guess, fantasy stuff. I mean- Dune, um, he's already been in an uh, X-Men movie. Yeah, I really liked him in Dune as well. Yeah, he was great in Dune. And um, I guess this is his second Marvel character. He's played Apoc- Apocalypse. Apocalypse? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. You're a bigger Marvel fan than I am. I am, but even probably I just uh, fucked up the name there, so don't call me a Marvel <laughs> fan. <laughs> I'm not familiar with that. Um, mutant. Uh, yeah, dude. So uh, I think we just got to move you slightly back from the mic. Oh, oh. Because okay. your levels are... Peaking. Really high. Sorry. You're good. Okay, you can be more relaxed. Low. I got to be on it because my mic is very low. Yeah, I won't get... I won't, um, as Joe Rogan says, bring that sucker in real close. Bring it in real close, son. Bit of, uh, co- I'll, be, I'll do a little social distancing. To the mic. Yeah. Not to you. Yeah, good. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's this video, dude? I'm seeing this uh, little... Oh, uh, yes. Our boy. Okay, I came <laughs> across this. Yeah. And... So, what we're looking at here is, if anyone's seen this, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's DJ Khaled on the, he's, I think he's been given a guitar by someone, like a friend, or it's like a present. It's a Bob Marley, like, special edition. Okay. And he's looking real, like, yep, he, he knows, like, he wants it. He, he's happy about it. He's talking himself up. He goes to play it, and it's the craziest it's like if an alien was watching what it is like to for a human to recreate this on a guitar. Right. And he goes for it and he just is like uh an um, another one. What does he say? Another, another one. one. It is ridiculous. So we'll just give it a watch real Let's real go. Quick. Get a close up. Get a close up. Get a close up of the case. The guitar. You know what I'm saying? And a special note from the Marley family. Shout out to the Marley. Melissa, can you read this for me? Can you read this to the world, please? Okay. Um, DJ Khaled, we're excited to share this new guitar with you. As someone who has an appreciation for Bob Marley's life and music, we want you to be one of the first to play the Guilty 20 Marley based on Bob's at-home songwriting guitar from 56 Hope Road. This guitar inspired songs that help unite the world, and we hope it gives you inspiration as well. Oh, okay. Dude, the confidence! <laughs> yeah. The confidence! He just keeps going. Oh. The way he's even strumming it. Why do I feel like he's gonna have to get it re strung straight away and it's like meant to be something you just mount? 
Oh my god, dude, he's so cringy. I feel like um he popped off on Snapchat for that era, you know, yeah. the, the, the key, and um and then I don't think he's realized that he's dropped off. He dropped off. But when was this upload? A year ago. Okay. A year ago. Well, but still, dude, that, that was like pre-COVID. Um, he was popping up on Snapchat and, you know, everyone was like, you know, another one, all that sort of shit. And um, I just don't think he's, he knows that he's not relevant anymore. Well, I just don't even know how he got to that point. It's like, it's just pure, like pure confidence has just become a person. Yeah. Like, does he even mix? Is he even a DJ? Like I think, but you know what? I think that's his whole thing. Like he knows that he he's he's not so much a gifted musician. He's just very smart at reading what's trending and bringing the right people together to work on a banger and just drop it. Like he, he's he's like he's a I guess you'd call a producer. Yeah. And um, yeah, you know, he just brings the right people together and we'll just do an album of like who's trending right now and one or two of those need to be a hit and you got money in the bank and then he can be like. Another one. Another one. But we're the best. <laughs> I think we actually have something for that. Do we, can we can we use one of these? Go. Okay. We're the best. I don't know. I don't know if that was good. It's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. 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 But, uh, so I liked it. And uh, that was it's, good, it's, dude. You just need confidence. You don't need anything else. As long as you're confident, you just achieve. You may it's need like a bit of talent. Ab- it's like Will I Am. That Dude, guy. You know what? Um, he, he's an interesting guy because I think it's more so like he's kind of like an inventor. He's got a, he's got like a forward thinking mind, and I think he's just like it, you know it, it just happened to start off in music, but like he's mm-hmm. been given some crazy opportunities um, in terms of like technology and science. Yeah, I know, but I don't know why him. It's not like he's going around. Uh, inventing stuff or publishing papers or I, I don't get it. I think it's like one of those um people that are you know good at walking the walk and talking the talk. And he's he you know some, a lot of his stuff's probably uh worked out well for investors. Um, do you know he's? Oh man, I need to make sure I get this right. But there was a, I think a, a a sound test done to check out like sending a message out into space. Mm-hmm. And they approach him to to make the sound that's going to be sent out into space in in terms of communicating with extraterrestrial life. What? Yeah, literally. Let me bring that up. Let me bring that up. Okay. Well, but what? He doesn't have any science understanding whatsoever, does he? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, I when I'm watching him on those talks, and it's like I think the video is called. Um, Will I am greatest bullshit artist in the world, and I couldn't. But be- he's on stage, and the in- intel have pulled him up and gone. <laughs> you know, you know, tech, come talk, and he goes on, and he has no clue what he's talking about. He doesn't even un- he doesn't even know the product he's talking about. Yeah, I think he just must be really good at talking. Yeah, but he's like making it up. That's what I'm freaking out about. He he doesn't even know what it is that he's he's on stage for. Um, I mean, I, I need to I need to like find the right um thing for this, but just uh, what I'm what I'm picking up already is the voice judge becomes first person to debut record record on Mars. Will I am? And what does he do? It's a wait. sound. Well, it's wait. What do you mean it's debuted? I think on he Mars? I think he live streamed a song. From Through Mars. the speakers of NASA's um, robot, which landed on Mars. Okay, but there could have been any mump hobo doing that. But, you know, all people. It wasn't even probably that relevant at the time. Yeah, I don't know why they got him. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, he's just he's just making big things happen, I guess, for him. Um, I think he's, like, got his, um, you know, I think he's quite in the music scene in terms of, doesn't he have a product as well? Like, a, like an iPod type thing? Does he? I think so. I don't know. We did a research. Will I am? Oh my god, this guy! I don't know. I uh, I didn't think he was that talented. He's he's. I don't know what he does on Black Eyed Peas or whatever. But uh, my understanding was that he's 
just just a guy from Black Eyed Peas, and that's been given way too many. Uh, way too yeah. many. He's just shown up. Yeah, <laughs> he's got. If he was a D and D character, he'd be like negative three intellect and plus five charisma. Right. And he'd just be like bluffing his way through everything. Or oh, do big time bluff, just just w- hoping that it works out. And uh, you know that's that's DJ Khaled. Yeah, I guess. I think, but you know, people are starting to catch on now. He, but he's been in the game for a long time. What, what does he say? Bless up. That's it. Bless up. Um, I don't know. We the best. That's all he says. I don't think he 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 made a song for his son, and the son like I think he said he mixed it or something. The dude's the kid's a baby. I guess you know that's that, that now that kid's just going to get royalties forever. He's just smart with his money. I think. Well, he knows what to how to hype himself, and that's half the game, right? Yeah, that's it. You just o- overconfidence and selling it. Um, yeah, you just got to sell the big talk. Yeah, I could not do that. This is why I can't be. This is why I couldn't be a salesman, man. I couldn't. I can't just bullshit people and say this is what you need. This is what I'm. This is how good I am. Yeah, dude. I, I feel like someone's gonna catch me out at any minute. It eventually happens. I, I, um, the whole fake it till you make it thing. Um, if you can do that without feeling like shit, then that's strange to me. That's what I think as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know how people do it. I couldn't do it. I've met a lot of people that do do it and I've seen a lot of people get caught and it's just like, damn, aren't you embarrassed? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm embarrassed for you. Yeah, dude. Like, especially even in my industry, um, I would, yeah, I would not want to be caught out for just faking it. Anyway. Yeah, okay. Well, I saw, I loved his guitar thing and- uh I think a lot. It's been a meme. People are like remixing it, saying what he thinks he sounded like. Has probably put flamenco covers and stuff. Look, someone oh. guitar. <laughs> someone covered the guitar noise he made. Oh wow. Okay. Well, you know, it's just. It's like pong, pong, I'm, pong, 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 I'm sure pong. he's got like the most basic understanding of rhythm, but um, zero. The way he technique. strummed it was completely open hand, like that, as if it that that's what I see in cartoons. That's what people do. That's how I would play the guitar if I had was given my first guitar as a kid. Yeah, and you just yeah, because you you watch on TV and that's what they do, and you go, oh, I just do the movements like this, and the, and the sound comes out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. That's what I saw, and I was horrified when I saw his open hand strumming that. Oh. I reckon it was hurting his hand as well, and it looks like he just powered through it. Like I, I'm on camera. Also, I don't think he could read because he asked the random. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was commenting on that. He asked the waitress to read it for him, and it's like, why is she in this video? I only read music. <laughs> I only read what I write, <laughs> which is not a lot. We're the best. Oh, dude, how exhausting would it be to be his friend? Oh, man, I, I, you'd, I, I don't think you'd have many close friends at that level of <laughs> of fame. Yeah, yeah, you gotta um, got to keep your day ones close. I, I wonder what his wife is like. She's probably just the biggest doormat ever i have seen some footage of him on like annoying her in like those tiktoks or snapchats and um he just doesn't she just looks like she just puts up with it yeah that's what i imagine you just got someone who's literally like how much will i put up with for the money (laughs) (laughs) i'm in it now got a kid just uh, honey please just please once you got the the baby money i don't want to be in camera please well she's never on camera is she uh, yeah, she's uh, yeah. There's been some smid- smidgens of her, you know, and some footage. Okay. Um, yeah, man, that's DJ Khaled with the best. Yeah, well, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do? Like, I, I've like, if I could do it, I'd do it. Have you seen his episode of Hot Ones? Yes, he didn't I saw do it. the. Uh, he he couldn't do it. Every they keep talking about it. Like six years later, he's like the only guest that was just like I give up, and 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 just the shittest um excuse. Like, hey, man, this you- is why people kill themselves. Like, this dumb, dumb shit like this is like, no, nah, you just look bitch. Just, <laughs> eat the hot, just eat a hot chicken wing, dude. Just eat yeah, a, yeah. It's just a spicy wing. You're going to be all right. Yeah. And, oh, well, you know, unless he's got some actual irritable Stomach bowel, ulcers. <laughs> stomach ulcer, but then why go on the show? Then why is he the best? Yeah. Why are you the best? You're not best. Ask yourself that question. So- we yeah, 98%. They, they talked about it then after for that for years going, remember DJ Kettle and how shit he was? Yeah. Like they, they kept bringing it up that he couldn't do it. That he couldn't do a single. <laughs> he couldn't. He did three wings. He's like, I didn't expect to do one. So dad, I, I, I don't even know how he speaks. What does he say? Yeah, you, you do a better impression than me. But he, he said, I done three and that, that, that's all love. Jeez. Oh, Just gave up. 
just gave up real quick. Yeah. Um, man, you know what? Um, I was talking about with some friends the other day, and um, it got me thinking. Do do you know of any? I mean, for those of you listening, we're from uh, Sydney, and growing up in high school, you know, you hear a lot of myths and legends um, when you get your driver's permit, and um, mm-hmm. you know, as young kids do, you go around. All, all hours of the night and um, exploring this stuff and um, you know running amok and uh, we're talking about there's this uh, abandoned theme park that was um, popular out in uh, Sydney called Magic Kingdom and I never personally went but uh, a lot of people I know went and uh, you know it's it's a freaky thing to go at night uh, to to a, a what I would say a small low budget theme park. Um, very very spooky especially if it's abandoned and there's just these like you know monster slides hanging around and like fake mushrooms and stuff like that and uh i did hear of some of the parts that made up the theme park were old parts from a larger theme park that's in sydney city called luna park and which was um which actually shut down for a period of years because of a tragedy that happened in the 70s or Mm -hmm. 80s and uh, was it on the um wooden coaster wasn't it I think it was a tr- some like a roller coaster, some sort of roller coaster, it, the, the a ghost ghost train, I think, ghost train yeah, fire, okay. and uh, yes, yeah, a bunch of people died, very horrific, and um, I would hate to think that they used some of those bits and bobs to um, build this little magic kingdom out in Sydney. Um, I don't know why it's closed. I think it was just competing with another theme park, but uh, yeah, apparently there's a lot of uh, freaky stuff that goes down there, and um, if you go at night, which is you know, it's still there's still remnants of it. Um, and I've been hearing about this for like over 20 years. So uh, it got me thinking like, yeah, do you know of any other um, local myths or, or any of any of you listeners out there? Um, is there anything that's very specific to your area? Like, you know, not, not, we're not, not talking about Nelly or, you know, the, uh, Bigfoot or anything like that, but more very specific local to your town. Is there any cool myths um, like out in Sydney we have a huge um, forested area, which we call the Blue Mountains, and there's just this myth of a black panther roaming around there. Um, yes, when I was growing up, there was uh, we had that we had the the black panther myth as yeah, well, and yeah. people said they spotted it across the. There were, I used to live across from a bushland, and uh, people said they spotted it in that bushland. Yeah, and there was a photo I think going around the newspaper of this massive yeah. black thing. It was very. Um, very low quality about the time yeah. this is before smartphones or anything and there was a photo though in the in the mail of this like giant yeah. black thing i think i remember seeing actual footage as well and again it was really low quality but um i mean you know it you can't really get an idea for scale i mean it could have been a black cat film close up <laughs> or it was a yeah. panther in the distance which if it was it was absolutely ginormous but um i don't know i don't know how it, the myth started was it that were introduced and brought over on like the the first few fleets i don't know i don't think that they're definitely not native well, it's like to a massive Australia. giga panther yeah okay well um, and, and so we actually have a, a massive football team named after them as well a black panthers yeah but panthers, oh, are, panthers. are real panthers are real yeah um but in, in for them to be living in um sydney i, I don't know yeah man people, people thought they panthers. saw them in like the city and stuff so it was very strange no i don't think that's real um, well, you know, uh, looking up that sort of stuff led me to... Wait, what about this haunted uh, uh, theme park? Man, it's what, just, what was the myth? I don't think there's really a myth about it. It's just like that that exists and um, people go there, you know. people. It's, it's, just, it's a place for like people to check out and, and it's just, you know, could potentially be haunted. Okay. And, um, oh, yeah, it was, was just was, a creepy vibe. It was a creepy vibe. I was seeing if any, anyone else had um, anything around their area that was like you know, a little location that you'd go to that was like, it would freak you out. And um, it led me on to uh, some other topics, which um, the, I know that there's like a hill in Sydney where if you park your car or put it in neutral, oh, apparently- pushed up a hill. Yeah, it gets like dragged up a hill. And then uh, looking into that, trying to find the location, I found out that there's several spots throughout the world that actually have this phenomena- yeah. Um, so yeah, check out in your in your town if you have a magnet hill, um, which would be pretty cool. The ghosts will pull you up. Yeah, the ghosts will hoist you up. And uh, well, we had um, 
I know my mate used to live around Picton. Yep. And he claimed the the graveyard there, the Picton graveyards were haunted. And there was a photo, if you Google Picton graveyard ghost, there's actually a photo that pops up of like this misty white thing that is kind of floating out in one of the graves. And we were there shooting uh, a film one time and my friends claimed they felt a boogie ghosts. But on the film, dude, we wanted... Oh, so we were filming at this location at the graveyard and that's the fake. I think that's the real one. Yeah, okay. We'll bring um, that up on screen. He, oh, do the record. Oh. All right. Um, so we we were filming there uh, for, you know, a film and it was a horror film and we had my mate there who was props and they, we said we we won for the film. We we were pretty freaky, but we said we want a pentagram on the right to do a graveyard. Very daring to do that in and a graveyard. They started to spray paint the pentagram into the graves. Like what on the grass, like on top of the graves? Dude, and I feel like, like you've just incriminated yourself. I said, "What are you <laughs> doing? Stop!" I have no the part in this. Devil pentagram on the bloody. Oh my god! On the graves, and just get some sticks. Yeah, and they're like, "Ah, oh, okay," and I'm. It just like spray painted the graveyard. Spray thought, paint oh, like a I'm plank haunted. of wood. Now I'm dead. When I go home, I'm going to be haunted by a boogie ghost. That's freaky, dude. I, um, look, you know, I can't say like we we're saying on the last episode. Um, I can't really say I'm. I believe in the paranormal, but you know, there's something still about me that wouldn't want to dare paint something like that in a graveyard or even hang around a graveyard at nighttime. It's just you I know, don't know. That person right was very strange. Bad energy. And- yeah, and I said, energy. don't spray anything. I'm going to ask for forgiveness after all this crazy yeah, shit. Dude, yeah. Um, so, I don't know. But we, we did do a pentagram on the on top of the graveyards and nothing freaky happened, but we had a lot of drunk people coming up trying to scare us and go, woo, uh, sure, yeah, okay, dude. Like, Is this so like a close to houses? It was close to a pub. Okay, well, there you go. Okay. I was like, where are, the, where was, are drunk was, people coming from? It wasn't like a big closed off area. It was a very small, kind of very old uh, graveyard that had been there for, you know, like over a hundred years. Yep. And the old graves there look very old. None of them were like, you would never bury someone there now. Um, do you think these new residential areas that are popping up everywhere um, are being built to accommodate graveyards? Or that's a thing of the past now? Because it's very common in, I mean, Sydney to go to a town and there's just a nominated plot of land amongst houses that's just a graveyard. But um, I know plenty of residential areas that have come up in the last 10 years and I don't see any graveyards amongst them. So, is that- um, Well, what that's are people interesting doing now? because- What are people doing well, with Well, you the have dead? to think not everyone gets buried in a cemetery, right? A lot of people get cremated. Yeah. Well, how was the percentage you think people get cremated versus- um, I guess it depends on culture, really. And well, what's the norm you think? Well, in Australia, uh, most people buried, right? You, you, the the rate of multicultural people is, is only going to get higher. So you, I think the the burying rate will probably get lower. I'm definitely keen to get cremated, but um, yeah, I don't want to really take up a plot of land. I don't want to really take up any land, um, even though I do intend to be put back into the soil or the land um it just feels From dust very, to dust it feels very selfish to just take up a big chunk of land that's what i think as well it's remember me forever and that's it yeah which i think is weird well even on these like massive cities and stuff like your new yorks and stuff um has, hasn't there had to be like rezoning of whole graveyards i'm sh- because eventually yeah it's just in the you way run of- out of space right it has to be uh, we've got a big yeah. graveyard here in sydney a couple of them, but yeah. I do not see any more being built. I don't know what, like, oh, I don't know if there is, but I have not noticed it. Yeah, and thought, ah, oh, good thing they put the new graveyard in because yeah. we got a million bodies piling up. So that's interesting. I wonder what they're going to do with um, just all the new people in the, all the new towns if they are expecting to just stack them on top of each other. Just ship them. Should, yeah. Like, just pile them a bit. There's a place in Central Australia that's just the mass graveyard. Damn, this got dark. It did. I'm scared. No, I'm not. Of the paranormal. Yeah. Remember Paranormal, uh, paranormal Activity, that movie? Dude, you know what? Um, I don't mind them. I don't mind them. I like the first couple. I went to see number three or four in the cinema, and I thought, pretty good. Yeah. But, last one I watch. 
I don't know. I didn't. Right. I thought it was just a lot of jump scares, and I didn't mind it. But like, you know, once it had been done, the found footage style after Blair Witch, they did it well. I think the first two, and yep. then after that, I thought, nah, I can't. I can only go on for this for so long. I actually never watched number one. They got, honestly um, got lower and lower budget as it went on. There was a peak there. You know, number two and three were. Yeah, definitely got. You know, the first the first one was was actually filmed in the director's house. That's um yeah, it was super low budget, but they made a lot of money off it. Yes, because of um how yeah. just and, and you know and they did step it up every movie with more creative ways for the jump scares. Yep, and um I you know what I think what interested me was, oh I mean what people would say lack thereof a plot. There was definitely a plot there that I found really interesting. There's you know this underlying thing about a you know witch coven and some deals made with the with a with a demon, and um. I was just very curious about all that. Even though, you know, you probably got about 10 minutes worth of uh, story crammed right to the end there. It was interesting, man. It was really it was really interesting. I think up, it, I, I liked them up until the marked ones. And then after that, when they went like, wasn't there like some 3D ghost dimension 4D Max extravaganza Universal Studios shit that came out? And it was just oh, like- no. Bring your family and then just your whole family. water spread on your face the, when you watched it. I don't shoot know. Shoot the ghost ectoplasm yeah. all over you. <laughs> it was just, they just took it too far. And I'm like, okay. And, and I don't think they even addressed the storyline. So I think they just missed the whole I mark. think they just went, okay, we've, we've gone too backwards. And yeah. we're just going to go the next level, which is just com- complete bananas. Yeah. And have no sense at all. What happened to um, the 3D TV craze? Yeah, you know, my brother had a 3D TV and I thought I have not watched one bit of content on here. You need to have the content. Actually, he's still got it. Like we, we could still go to my mum's house and watch this damn thing. I, I have one as well at home. But we need and, the glasses. Um, you need the the powered glasses, the battery in them. My one didn't come with powered glasses, but it came with two sets of glasses. And Well, because my- the picture doesn't converge like the cinema. It's different. Well, I actually have a button on my remote. The conversion happens in your eyeball, huh? And it, it can simulate 3D, or you would put in a 3D Blu-ray. But it, there was a button on the remote to, to simulate 3D as best as it could, um, which we never used. And we, we probably had the TV for like, I don't know, six years. Well, this was a 3D TV, and I've never tested it and gone, wow, it's 3D. My friend swore by it and says, great. I think a lot of people you were ready for it. You still download 3D movies. Yeah, I'm sure, like, you know, the people are still making them. But, like, I think people were really thinking, like, that was the direction for- Movies. It was going to yeah, be. It's going to be. It was going to be three D. Extra normal experience. Yeah, and the only thing that paranormal happened, experience. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it's pretty cool that. Uh, I mean, I don't know how uh, how much of the world is still doing it, but they've recently started bringing like the four D uh, experience back to cinemas. Oh, uh, where uh, you get sh- you know the wind. Yeah, and yeah. The, yeah. And that, I don't think that's pretty cool. That's pretty retro, and I like that. Yeah, that was okay. always fun back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I um. I don't know. I'm not a fan. I I do. I don't mind. Th- I wonder if the new avatars will be 3D again. That would be because you I know would what? Like that, it. I, think I would do it. That's I a, like the other know, ones. Anything anything made for IMAX is warranted for 3D. Yeah, which we don't have an IMAX cinema for ages now. Yeah, we're still waiting on that. Build it, damn it! Oh, dude, that's a soft spot. Wish we could have watched Dune on that. I know. That would have been good. Devastated. Oh well, what are you gonna do? What else did you have? Man, speaking of Avatar, um, I watched um, Apocalypto. Have you seen that? No. Um, I believe Mel Gibson directed it. Um, it's a movie set in, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know, like 10,000 BC or something like that. It's uh, following the Aztecs or mm-hmm. the Mayans, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't go into the movie because, you know, watch it. But there was a scene at the... Uh, and, and, you know, this movie's been out for a while, so I'm not really spoiling anything. But there was a scene at the end there that um, was a really crazy thought. And um, basically, these uh, Mayans are, are, are on the shoreline and they're confronted with a fleet ship from, I don't know, maybe Britain or something. And I just thought, like, that would be the most terrifying thing to witness Um Imagine, like, being a civilization that is coastal, which most are, and not even understanding that there's land beyond the water. Mm-hmm. You've done your, you know, navigation of your land mass that you're on, but to well, then see wait, something this come is out like of the water. Uh, was this the- Did they believe in, in 
uh, like the earth was like you're just going to drop off the edge. I mean, I don't know what these this civilization specifically believed in, but say you even knew the world the world was round, and you hadn't seen anyone else from another culture. Yeah, you're just assuming you might or be it, the only ones on the planet, or then you might be like, well, yeah. I don't know what the well, hell you they're might, you, you may have been visited by other cultures, but to see a ship that you've never, you don't even know what a ship is, you'd be like, that's an alien. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah totally. If you're if you're in like sticks and stones era, and this fleet ship comes with people with like uniform, and you're like in spear mode. <laughs> spear mode <laughs> you know like what is what's going through your head because you you know you're seeing the same ocean every single day you're like oh another day oh another sunset on an ocean and then all of a sudden there's this thing well, just sitting on the water no, you would have no clue at all what you're looking at you would have it would be like taking drugs almost for the first time you would have absolutely no idea what to expect because you're seeing this thing and you're yeah, it might as well be an alien. It would be an be- alien. Because you don't even know what the planet is. You're like, are we? what's out there? When I look up, is the sky there or does it go out? And or this person, can I go there? This person you doesn't no look like clue. me. Huh? This person doesn't look like me. They don't dress like me. They don't talk like me. That would be very alien-like. Yeah, well, there's that video footage you can find of the that culture that- um, Oh, it's like uh, segregated from the world. Yeah, they're not, segregated not by choice, from the world. But they, they choose they, to be- Well, they're not choose to be. They don't even know- like the outside world exists pretty much. They have no contact, like in the Amazon jungle, never contacted or been in contact with other people. And they'd never seen white people before. And when they came and saw the white guy who went to study them, they were sh- scared because he was white. They mm. thought he had been like possessed. Right, right, right. And they were ca- coming up to his hand and looking at his skin and wouldn't even touch it yeah. because they thought it was like a disease. It would be fr- it would be frightening because you just n- n- you, it's probably things you can't even fathom. And yeah, I guess you know it's just anything that isn't the normal would just be frightening. And then you know um it made me think like I know there's a lot of um ancient cave paintings and and hieroglyphs that people like to tend to believe that are spaceships, but what if these were just other cultures visiting other cultures and that's how they were kind of painted down? Well, well maybe, but then you have like Heaps of civilizations talking about things coming from the sky, right? What if the civilization that um, came to the um, people that illustrated it just used the sky as navigation? So when they came and tried to explain to the people, oh, yeah, we, we use the stars for navigation to find our way to you. They were like, oh, you guys came from the stars? That's how they, you know, because there's no, there's a language barrier there. You got what I'm Bam. saying? I know. That's some I know. Shit. I just thought of that right now. All right. Yeah. I guess, but okay. Picture this. Yeah. I, I kind of agree. That's freaking trippy. You just, you just blew my mind. I actually just bit. came up with that as I was talking about it. I'm like, oh, okay. That, that does make sense. Cause if there was a language barrier and you, and you know, n- stars were navigation. You, a lot of people use Polaris and stuff to yes. get their way well, around. Well, they would need the sky and the stars. And- if you were to illustrate to someone, oh, this is how we got here. We used the stars. They'd be like, oh, you came from the stars. Yeah, okay, I understand that, but hear me out. There's this ancient tribal um, stories in the Aboriginal culture called the Wanjina. Right. I love that word, Wanjina. That sounds pretty cool. And uh, they talk about, and there's cave paintings of, um, and they they talk, they they asked these um, uh, uh, Aboriginal elders about them and said, Tell me the story of them. And they all told that they came out of the clouds, flew down, and their ships were so powerful that they burned the land. That's That's how cool. they described it. And they described them that they, they would breathe. Uh, uh, don't quote me on it exactly, but they breathed fire on the land and burned all the trees. So maybe rockets, rocket wow. powered. And they said they were so powerful- uh, the way they said they said they had huge eyes, black, like well, wow. like oh the, well, like okay. Kids. And they said they were so powerful that they didn't need their mouths to speak. They spoke to you. What they understood, they said they didn't need their mouths. So what that has lined up with so much of that telepathic, yeah, speech. That, wow, um, I've never heard of that before. That's cool, man. Like, and then you know, like that's pretty much describing the greys, the greys, right? But this was thousands of years before wow. anyone had sightings of them, and they're a very uh, and they're all old, drawn into they're the a caves. very old race. Like they yes. have um, tales from you know, Aboriginal. You mean? Yeah, yeah. Aboriginals are the oldest people in the planet. They, they are um, older than Africans. It's very wise. 
that's cool. Very wisdom is very wisdom. A lot of stories to pass down, and that's really really cool. And I mean, I've, you know, you find that amongst a lot of cultures, they have these ancient stories that really kind of marry in with um, current tech. Yeah. Or things that even haven't even been invented yet, and it's kind of freaky, man. I agree. Um, and I would just love, absolutely love to go. When people are saying, "Oh, I can go on a time travel machine, a spa- a time like a time traveling machine," I'd go into the future right away. I'm like, hell no! I'd go into the past, son. You kind of want to know so what's much going on. Interesting shit. I would go back and be like, "How did you build the pyramids? How did you do it? How did you build?" Um, how, how did you how did you move those rocks across yeah. the entire desert? How long did it take? What was going on? Why are you drawing these massive creatures with dog heads? Right, right. I mean, you know, drugs could have a huge part in it, but I would just love to know what if you if you were to only tra- be able to travel back once, make one jump back, and then you come back to present. What time period and where? Well, see, I think that a one jump situation. Don't judge me, oh. but I am going to jump back just to pretty much help myself at that point because, one, well, well can I bring a camera and stuff? No, I'm going to say it's an inner journey. Oh, fucking <laughs> Okay. Because you know what? You you will change everything. <laughs> you will destroy the world if you go, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah um, aliens visited. I'll be Ashton Kutcher and choke myself as a baby. Yeah. The, the, oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> that's it. Um, no, uh, I would go back and I, a spiritual journey, let's say, and I knew what to do and I could like absorb the knowledge. Yeah. I'd go back and just say buy Bitcoin. <laughs> right. Interesting. Like, That's just an interesting to, like, choice. To go back and just write as Bitcoin was taken off and hoard about 10,000 Bitcoins and just sit on them. Interesting. And say, just sell them in like 2020. Do you feel like you, you chose that because it's like the past is the past and if I can- Set myself up for the future, then might as yeah, well. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, I get that, man. Because then, you know, like- Because, like, you're only going back once. Yeah. And you'll be like, okay, I got a snippet of knowledge, but, like, wait, how long can I go back for? As long as you need. As long as I need. Well, but, you know, you're going to age, so- Oh. You're going to want to, like- And, and in, in saying that, like, it's so hard because, like, imagine saying, oh, I want to go back to when the pyramids were getting built. And what if it does turn out that they took, like, 20 years to build a more- and then you're like, you just come in and they're just putting down foundation lines. You're like, how long do I have to wait to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for something yeah. to happen? And what if the time you come back is when the aliens visit? So you just have no idea. You have to spend a lifetime to Okay, now nah, then yeah, I'm sticking to what I said. You? Well, after this conversation, I'm kind of, I was going to say I'm like- I'm going for the Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, dude. I was going to go, I was going to say pyramids, but now like thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, if you go back uh, and you can only just take yourself- and you and you come back and go, guys. I I know I know the story about the pyramids. People go, hey, but where's your evidence? Yeah, and you go, oh, that's what, oh right. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say as well. So I have if I don't have and evidence, boat. and then I'd be like, oh, you faked it. Can you bring back something? Well, how would you even know? Prove it. People could say you just right. faked it. How many people out bring there back probably? someone from that time? Carbon datum. <laughs> carbon datum. <laughs> <laughs> just kidnap Tutan Carmen. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Run with him. Let him let him have modern medicine and grow old. He was apparently pretty pretty unhealthy guy. Was he the one that was killed when he was young or he just died young? Man, he was born with like a club foot yeah, and he walked stuff. with a cane and everyone just pra- praised him and he had an elongated head. That, dude, you so sound like, like you're describing baby. an alien. You're, you're describing an alien right there. I'm um, freak. Yeah, probably. Maybe he was an alien. Maybe. He was the first um, Splice and didn't work out. I did not like that film. Did you? Which one? Splice. Oh, no way, dude. No. Oh, okay. That's terrible. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, that was horrible. No, that's, uh, yeah. We don't talk about that. Don't talk about the dark times. But I wouldn't, yeah, I, I want, give me the Bitcoin. The Bitcoin's a smart thing, man. I Like, I get that. Um, are you are you talking about you're inventing it? You're bringing it to the surface? No, nah, I'm, I'm- You're aware of it? No, no, I'm aware of it. And but, I just go back into my, to, to my younger self and say, buy about a 10,000 of them when they're worth like one cent. Like just when it comes out, it's worth nothing, right? Do you think there was that- like the first? They have the 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 newspaper that says the four hundred million dollar pizza. It's like one of the first things ever purchased with Bitcoin was a pizza at a pizza restaurant, but it right. costed like thousands of Bitcoin because they're worth nothing at the time. Right, right, right. And now that they said now it's worth like four hundred million. Do you think your past self, if you were to tell them to spend all their savings on this, they would believe future you? Ooh, how am I coming to my younger self? <laughs> 
dude, I got this crazy idea. It's called Bitcoin. So you need to buy it. Out of the, the, I just pop out of the. Just like like a fucking Doctor Strange oh, thing. Oh, okay. Then yes. And I think I'd believe it. You believe I, it? I always had a crazy suspicion that one day I'm going to come into contact with my future self. Wow. Right? And go, I knew it. You, my boy. Yeah. <laughs> you you are me. Predestination. And, uh, and, I'll, and then I'll know. Right. Do you um do you think when it comes to time travel, um not a lot of people think about it this way, but do you think it's as simple as jumping back in time, or do you need to physically find the point that you could be standing on the surface of Earth in time? Because you know we're rotating around the sun and we're also shooting through space. Yeah. So do you need to get like no well, so physical saying, point. Yeah, that's right. If people are saying you need to be in the exact space time that it happens, it's literally impossible because our galaxy is like flying through the Milky Way. There's no at point a zillion kilometers an yeah, hour. There's no point of like or, um to to branch off of. You don't know where the center point is to to find out in space where you, where well, you are. Well, we we spin around the galaxy like we sp- spin around the solar system. But that solar system is spinning around the Milky Way. And, going through- and we're like flying yeah, through dude. space at like thousands of kilometers, including the sun is spinning. I'm sure a, a scientist I could just calculate me out too hard when I think the about distance stuff. from stars and be able to do pinpoint locations through space. It'd be, it'd be just triangulating stars. I don't know stars. how the hell they came up with this shit. I can barely comprehend it now. And you've got people in the Stone Ages. Well, not the Stone Ages, but with pre-technology, essentially. We, they're just someone's inventing the wheel and some guy's like, you know what? I think I can calculate exactly where we are based on that tiny, Dude, yeah. minuscule movement in the, star, in the stars. And I'm pretty sure the stars are all other galaxies that, that are having planets like us. That's um, you know, It makes me feel like a stone man. Yes. Because- if you were to give me a wheel and tell me to figure out the circumference of the world and which stars do what, and and I would not be able to figure it out. Yeah, same. I would be in the exact give same situation. Give me all the I'd time. Like, I will not be able to mathematically. Yeah, I would just look at it and be like, I can't do it. I would try and make a car. I would. I would have a better luck making well, a car than if you've ma- never even seen it. a car, and you have no understanding of physics and no understanding of <laughs> of anything thermodynamics and go well yeah i can do it yeah steam 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 power steam power is not even a thing yet this was like the 1700s was this steam even happening i'm saying even now if you give me a wheel now yeah i still can't do it so it's just i would uh, just know pi and that's about it Uh, calculate uh pi r squared i can i can punch in pi in a calculator that's all i can do uh when was the steam engine invented Oh, 1765. Oh, no, 1698. My God, that's a lot older than I thought. That was like five... That was like 400 years ago. At what point... Um, so, you know how, like, all the major roads in all major cities around the world are based off horse and carriage? Yeah. At what point will that road system develop? Probably Never. You don't get stuck with it? Well, I think if they haven't done it in 400 years, it's like, what are we waiting for? Or do you think trans- it would have to be something as big as like teleportation to get rid of roads? Nah. People would still be just too lazy and to, to change it, I think. You just leave them? They're already set. No one's changing them now. I guess they just build houses, apartments on them. Yep. <laughs> yeah, even if teleport, it'd be like Jetsons. We're all flying around in pipes. Yeah, yeah. They thought we were going to have flying cars in like the 50s. What was it? 1985. They're like, yeah, we're going to... Back to the Future said uh, hover cars. It's happening. And hover bo- hover things. Right? Yeah. But no, we're not even close. We're a long way away from that. It's Right now, everyone's just thinking, when's, when am I getting my next iPhone? Yeah. That's about as far as it gets. What is going on? My screen has got an issue. This flickering thing here. You see that? I can't see that. That? Oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. There's something wrong with my monitor. Uh, whatever. Yeah. But, um. oh, dude, can you imagine having to dress like people did in the 17, 1800s? Oh, it's like, man. I'm going to put on my three-piece suit to play with my boat in the water. Dude, like uh, when we, we were talking about that, and um, it just imagine like having a day's worth of work in a full suit, and then getting home and staying in pants and a shirt, 
And then when you go to bed, you wear your full your pajama pajamas. suit, a pajama suit, which is like a button up long sleeve shirt and pants. Like imagine just wearing pants 24 seven. Like, <laughs> oh my God. Like it's a pants man's world. That would suck. I would never feel relaxed. Yeah, that whole and, generation and it is was just stress. Even like amongst your wife. Yeah. Uh, I must be f- fashion. Yeah, I am fashion. I am fashion. And everyone, no matter how poor you were, I have a suit. I have a hat. I need to look as fancy as the fanciest man. People just like, I guess, you know, even people that went well off, they had a suit and they, I think they probably had like two yeah. suits and they just- Rotated and, yeah. constantly. And you're scrubbing everything by hand. So you're washing that three piece every second day. I just assume everyone stunk like ass. You know, like when- right now, um, Sydney's having, I mean, I don't know if it's a lot of most of the world, but we're, we're going through some crazy uh, weather conditions at the moment where it's constantly raining and everyone I know is struggling to- keep on top of their washing you know it's hard to just dry your clothes and stuff so imagine just having one suit and being like please don't let it rain because i got not i literally have nothing oh, they to probably hung it inside and just but it, let it stay. You know, there's, there's no heating fire what if it's a fire on, there's no perfectly sealed window so just moisture from nah, outside they put in. the fire on in the garage <laughs> just don't forget no one's living in apartments back no then. yeah yeah everyone had a house and if you're in the um you got a fire. You could put a cast port or like uh, even the poorest people, you had a, some sort of shelter covered and you bit a bit of string yeah. and just put the- or just drape it over a chair and then just put the fire on. That's funny. I, I, I we, we had a fireplace in the old place in, in our old house and um, that's definitely what my mom did. Just drape it over the fireplace and just let it dry out that way. Yeah. 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 That's, uh, that's what it would be, I assume. Man, I I think it's so like I keep thinking, are we gonna go more chill in our clothing now? Can we get more chill than are you, we, are we are? About because comfort? we're just getting more. Are you talking so about comfort? People used to, you know, fifty years ago, even people wearing suits to work every day. Yeah, and that's not happening anymore. I mean, now with tra- COVID, you're anymore. wearing track suits to work from home now. Yeah, so. I was working in my naked. No one you just <laughs> just working naked. Um, I don't know, man. That's a, that's a tough one because, uh, I mean, tr- in terms of fashion trends, that's a thing of the past. You can't get a, a mass of people dressing the same these days because there's too many outlets to get your fashion advice from f- to, you know, too many too many inputs, too many different types of styles that you can follow. Where back in all those different decades, there was just an influential style that everyone mm. copied. Everyone's unique now because of social media. Yeah. You'll have one friend that's just like, I love the 80s. I dress like the 80s now. And your friend's like, oh, no, I, I dress with what's coming out right now. And Yeah, but I'm saying, will you think it's going to be more acceptable in, say, like a Hunger Games-esque look where everyone just slowly morphs into more and more fashionable, where everyone's slowly going almost back to- Oh, you're talking about like the- The, 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 the whole look. Crazy, um, yeah, like Renaissance, not Renaissance, but like the, 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 the fanfare of like the white- m- paint face with the crazy lips and the crazy hair. Not that far, but even just going back to being extremely fashionable when you had to go out. Like that's like hundreds oh, of Oh, I get what you ago. mean. Sorry. Like so you're talking about- Back into like suits. You're talking Everyone's about just people back dressing back. up more. Yeah. Dressing up more just to go out. You know, to um, the shops right now. I see everyone in thongs and and uh, shorts and, and, you know, that would have never flown a hundred years ago. You couldn't have even imagined going to the shops without yeah, your yeah. top hat and vest. I don't think it would happen because- you got to understand a lot of um, what guys don't particularly care about that sort of stuff. And if the more socially acceptable it is to just wear thongs and trackies everywhere, it's going to be hard to convince those people to be like, oh, it's it's now fashionable to dress up to go to the shops. I guess. But when? When do you think it's going to happen? I don't think it will happen. Ever. People that care about it will probably do it. But you're going to have a huge group of people that will never adapt that. Man, I, I disagree. I feel like at one point, someone everyone's just going to be doing it. Like everyone's just going to be back on the hype of I'm just going to I'm going to wear my fashion again. Because it, the way I'm thinking of it, um, it doesn't look like we're going to need to be going to places that much. I mean, you'll probably see friends, but the way like, you know, with Meta and shit posting their stuff, it's like it's all online. You don't go to the office anymore. You shop online, so you don't need to go to the shops. A lot of people eat in or you get takeout. 
when you see your friends, you know, it's usually at each other's houses because of COVID and stuff. So the the push to get dressed up to do something is happening less and less. So you don't need to go out as much. So to to picture this near future where people are going to dress up more, it's like, where are they going? I guess, but, th- well, here's my take on it. There's, we're all living inside our houses, right? Yep. We're not meant to be as humans. No. I'd say most people should be outside. And I, that's my, one of my theories why, um, why tradies don't get as much mental health issues as people working at computers. Because I've read studies that say you are eight times more likely, don't quote me on the number, but something like eight times more likely to develop a mental illness if you work in front of a computer all day versus someone who's outside. Even if you're doing the most labor intensive jobs, you're more likely to develop a mental illness sitting in a computer. I believe that. So, I think there's going to be this huge push for people to- coll- Like, even with COVID, right? You just see how many people want to get out and cannot wait to just get back on the trips with the family and get seeing with everyone again. Yeah. So, I think you'll just have this massive push of people getting back in to wanting to become cultured again. Like, like together, work together, eat together- go out together more, go back into the office more. I think people are going to get, yes, there's a balance, but I think in general, people are going to want to, excuse me. um, Bring that back. Want to bring that that mentality back. Just like you have people who want to always dress up and just like you say, you know, I have friends that always want to dress up. They never want to be in trackies and and even at home, they're in jeans all the time. Yeah. And uh, you know, I I, I agree with you in that, in that where, um, a lot more people these days are trying to go back to the um the yeah. vintage of it's you know, vintage living. baby yeah you know you just you don't want to live um amongst all this tech you kind of want to touch some grass and and you know live in a log cabin a lot of people are going back to that these days yeah and i've heard a lot of people even say well i had this old mate who used to work with me he was like my mentor back in the day he was a lot older than me he had a mate who went and to the bush in the Amazon jungle to do the ayahuasca trip. You know, wow. The, the big one. Yeah, yeah. And he literally left his entire life after he he did the trip. He said, this is what I want to do. And and dropped everything, his job, his friends, his family. The trip was so life-changing for him that when he did it, he just said, screw it. I'm staying here forever. Wow. That's full reset. Full reset. I mean, look, it's- uh- it's it, like good on him, but then at the same time, like you know, I if I would want to do something like that, I'd still want to probably keep in contact with friends and family. But at the same time, you know, if you just need a bit of a reset, well, I don't know what his situation was like. Yeah. You know, it, does he hate his family? That's true. Yeah, yeah, but maybe he just thought, ah, screw it, I'm gonna do it. And look, you know, uh, it's uh, big. It's prop, huge, huge. Because you're dropping to, um, all the tech. Yeah. You'd have all to want fun, a big all video life. games, everything you you know you you love is gone essentially it, yeah very quickly you've just hit reset on the on the old computer Kaboosh. do we have a reset button here? Dun, 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 dun. no we don't. no i got nothing slapping no <laughs> <laughs> imagine um just hearing from mates for ages about oh did you go to go to the jungle to do an ayahuasca trip and you finally spend like your life savings to go overseas and do an ayahuasca trip and it's just some guy in the jungle doing this and that's it. <laughs> what slap in the shit out of you? You just get slapped in the face and then you you're like- You just get slapped and they're like, ah, oh. oh, that'll be $6,000. And he goes- 6,000 pesos, please. No, dude, and he's just like, that's that's the ayahuasca trip. That's and, pretty good. And the, and the reset <laughs> happens from understanding that you, you probably shouldn't follow people. And then you just do your own thing. It's, it's, too, all, it's, too a, embarrassing. it's all a big lie and everyone's been lying to you this whole time and you just go there and get slapped. Yeah. And that's the, you, you, you end up resetting your whole life because it's so embarrassing to come back and say- it was oh, all a lie. Yeah, I yeah. cannot bear the shame. And that's the secret yeah, trip. Yeah. You're like, oh, oh, it's just sunburn on my face. Yeah. In, the, in, a, in a shape of handprint. Yeah. I had my hand there. I had my hand. Yeah. And, and it's a sunburn. That would be hilarious. <laughs> but obviously, that's probably not the, the case. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like. Would you do it? Ayahuasca? Not right now. I think I'd have to be in a different point in my life to do that. Yeah, I, um, I don't think I'll ever be doing that it. That sounds like a huge 
Oh man, like I don't know. I, I feel like you're think mentally I, you prepared for something like that. Some goddamn mental stamina to I think even well, you need to be some seriously mentally strong person, I think, to not absolutely have your mind shattered. Well, you have to be willing to have your mind shattered beyond <laughs> yeah, comprehension yeah, and then mean. being yeah. able to recover from that. You need to be because so grounded in your own reality to be open to the ideas oh, yeah. of sh- oh, reshaping shit, it. Yeah. Um because well for me personally, I my in my family, I'm definitely um prone to psychosis. Right. Okay. And like there's mental health issues in my family. Okay. And there is no w- like back in the day. I was like, "Oh yeah, DMT, I'll do that shit." Yeah, yeah. I was come, I'll do that shit, and that was definitely it. not. But now, no way, man. I could barely. No, no. Just no, I'll, no I'll way. rather do this. I'll do that. I'll do that uh, in a couple of days' time. But if it's ayahuasca, I can I'm do it now if you want. No. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I definitely wouldn't be able to do that, man. Uh, that is that is very advanced I, for the mind. I, I, I don't think I can handle it. And I reckon it just shatter your mind. If I were to do it right now, it just shatter my mind. I wouldn't know where I am. Well, that's the point, right? Well, you'd no, you'd want to use that to, but you'd want to have a, a, a still a grounding on who you who you were, so you can be like, oh, this is my now, this is my now true purpose. Where if you just go there and that happens, you're just like bubbles. <laughs> Bubbles. <laughs> no, you don't know shit. You just right rot your mind. Oh, like I can't even. You just reform back to yes, child, dude. Yeah, like you just clean slate, and you're just like, oh, it's like an ego detonation, just yeah, gone. I mean, you could that could likely happen. You just fry your brain, and you're just stuck in the Amazon. Well, I've heard that it's impossible to fry your brain with this stuff. See, right. I don't know whether you can trigger it. See, I I don't know. I don't know the science behind it, but I've heard that. Well, I don't know if this type of psych- psychedelic can even trigger psychosis, if that's a thing, or if it's just any psychedelics. See, I've heard people use meth and just become like wow. hooked immediately, like immediately. Yes. Um, and it's just like I do it once and that's it. My life is over. I remember um, hearing of this uh, subreddit. I don't know if it was a subreddit. Or so, some, oh. So, oh, yeah. Go, there, sorry, there was go. someone uh, posting um, essentially like a controlled experiment on a, of heroin and heroin is um morphine i don't know yeah don't, okay go i don't do drugs and uh i do all the time oh no, god, god damn um yeah so apparently this person was like trialing it in a most controlled way they could see fit and 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 punching in uh, a daily update of you know this is how i felt this is how much i did and then um oh like the- microdose yeah but then like i think uh, you know, stepping it up to the point of like just seeing how long they can do it for in a controlled way without getting addicted, and then I think a person apparently the person like just started rambling on, and then after a few, uh, maybe months or something, they just went blank on the internet, and no one knows what happened to them. And I guess you, you want to know, was that all a ruse, and someone was just you know was playing with a bunch of people, or did someone legitimately get uh, addicted? And that's pretty sad. <laughs> No, no. Some people do it for the for the. Yeah, some they, people they just want to troll the internet. And, yeah, um, they just want to make it. Troll it's definitely the possible. Like how many they've been? My God, you'd have to be pretty bored to just be like, mm, nah, I think I'm just going to scientifically by myself with no scientific evidence, just and no degree, just just. I'm gonna do a mark the of effects of heroin use. I'm gonna just do a bit of heroin, just a little bit happens. and and just say day one, saw a fairy. It's all day God. two, day so- day two, saw I God. Am God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> day two, I saw God. Day three, I am God. Yeah, day, day three, four. I am God. But day day four, four, uh just blank. Day four is just like hieroglyphics. Experiment over. Yeah. It's just hieroglyphics. That's it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're cooked once you do it once. Like that's it. Like you do it well, actually, I'm pretty sure heroin, I've heard the stories of heroin is morphine and you get addicted to it because you're in a bad situation in your life and you use it as an escape. Right. But then the thing with meth is I've heard that meth is nine times more addictive than sex. Like right. so, it it feels nine times better than sex. Okay, I, I so it's, it's not the fact that it's an addictive euphoric substance. Or something. Yeah, it's because it's like just overdone goodness. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's like you feel so good. Well, yeah, but you're constantly well, chasing you imagine, that feeling. Like, think about how many dudes have like ruined their fucking marriages and ruined their lives because they just want a little bit of puss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, and so they okay, get I'm, nine I'm, times I'm, in one shot, and they're like. God damn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you can imagine how much sex drives people's inhibitions. Yeah. 
Is that the right word? Inhibition? No, inhibition. Yeah. How much sex drives people's... What's the word? Uh, how much sex drives people... We'll get um, there. Motives, we'll put the word up motives, here. Motives. Sorry. Yeah. And, you know, sex sells everything. Right. It's, you know, guys go to work to have money to have women. A lot of the time, let's say. Yeah. Or they'll do something so out of character well, so, you know, because all, they can all, get with some really It's on all marketing. Shit. It's in all pop songs. It's, yes. It's, that everyone knows that. Everyone knows it. It's and primitive. Imagine it's, if something <laughs> was nine times better yeah, than that. Yeah. You can imagine the lengths you'd go to to be like, I just want a little bit of that again. Well, isn't that that's like- That's why, fuck, I, I'm never touching that shit. I'll probably never come out. What if um that's how like the new metaverse is marketed? Like, what if it's like nine times better than real life and- when you experience it and what you can do in it, it's so much better than real life. That's why people just get hooked and you're going to get masses of people getting hooked onto this augmented reality. But dude, it's not. I've already seen what the metaverse you is. You had a little look? You had a little peek? Yeah, dude. It's exactly like VR chat <laughs> but on the blockchain. It's like blockchain VR chat. What about it's the potential? Horrible. Every Dude, every second guy on there is like, do you know the way? Do you know the way? Still. Yes. That meme's still going. It's still- Dude, people are just idiots on there. It's oh. like a bunch of kids- with Oculus riffs and just not knowing what the hell's going on. Let me go. Brother, do you know the way? <laughs> Wait, I want to do it. Do you know the way? I said, le- let me take you to the way of the devil. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Um, that is that is Knuckles. The on, Knuckles. That's, that's uh, Knuckles on steroids. Knuckles. That's, yeah, you get yeah, yeah, Knuckles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's essentially what it is. It's blockchain VR chat. And he's like, wow, look at this crazy bumbo jumbo that's happening. And no one could care. It's, it's, dude, Facebook is already losing its stock like crazy. I guess you, you look at the stock, it's just tanking. It's also like potential half there? Do they, are they no. seeing long term? No, nah, no. Nah. They're, they're saying it's going to be, um, it's this new thing, but it's not. So you're saying we're not ready for that yet? Because that's definitely the direction. You can't have TikTok it doesn't forever. E- it's not even that fun. I just don't see the Like appeal. TikTok's hitting all the receptors now, but um, it's, you know, Is everything's- it? Yeah, right Man, now. Man, I could TikTok's care less. Right oh, wait, TikTok? Yeah, TikTok's killing it right oh, now. Oh, TikTok, I think it's Facebook now. But no, uh, like, uh, I feel like augmented reality, that's like definitely- Augmented TikTok. Oh, well, then that's it. See, but the thing is, that's all it. that happens it's is it just looks 3D. And so you're not experiencing anything different. It's like, I'm not getting extra sensations. like- yeah, I know I'm in the virtual world, but well, what if it does get to that stage? You know, like I'm saying, the potential in it, in like head. you, you, you wearing like like in Ready Player One, you're wearing the the, the suit. suits and you're feeling it. You're in it. It's so realistic to you. You're feeling it. You're you 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 feel like you're grounded in this made up world. That would be so hard to go to yeah, real life. It would have to be at that point. But I'm sure that that is the motivation, right? That's the that's the end goal. It, this is humble beginnings for Meta right now. They're just like, uh-huh. oh, you want to play poker and dress up as a shark with your friends in space? Go for it. But you're going to be working there soon. You think? Yeah, dude. You think I'll just keep going and never fail? Yeah. I reckon that's... It, for, before even Meta launched, everyone was pushing all the stock reality. is just... VR crashing. is still... The stock is just going down. It means its value is going down. And uh-huh. also, you potential. can't have this... You can't have this mentality that, like, a lot of companies now will just say, you know, we got to have growth this year, this much growth, this much growth. There can only be that's a flawed system because there can only be so many users in the in the planet, right? You'll get to a point where you have you've grown, like I think something Facebook has a couple billion users, right? Billions, but you'll get to a point where one people don't care anymore, or two, you've hit you're reaching the population limit, and right. you cannot grow anymore. Right, because you mm. can't have any more growth because they've had for the first time. Yeah, it was yes, it was a small amount, but for the first time, I read an article saying that Facebook had lost users in the fir- in one of its months in in the last couple within the last couple months. It had lost users for the first time since it launched. Okay, because it could. You can't just have constant. I'm just growing. I'm just growing. I'm just growing. It 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 cannot sustain. Well, I think that's why they're going into this new venture, right? Yeah, but let's say you, even all the users transfer across. How are you gaining more users? Well, I mean, you, not you, and now you're going to pay you for that too by making that experience evolve. Because it's not going to be like once you're in and that's it forever. It's not like Facebook as a social media platform. It's gonna. It's literally like what we can't even comprehend. You're in a fake world. 
Yeah. And if they've got that jump on it, they're going to oh, be the first person to work on it. Let's say if you had that suit they tech. Got the funds, they got the funds tech. on it. You've got Rhea Play- Ready Player One suit tech. Maybe. Other yeah. than that, well, you got to wait for the brain implants. I mean, people are already starting to implant themselves with chips and stuff. Would you? No. No, the same. Not for me. Not for me. I, I, I want to be the people in the log cabin. I want to stay far away from that stuff. I think I like to say that too, but I think I like a bit of both. You just need one influential person to get a huge amount of people on board. And then one of those people on board is influential to you and then you're on board. Yeah, they already had the people implanting the goddamn credit cards into their wrist. Yeah. And I thought, that's stupid. Just put it in a ring. Man, how bad was it for... um? Uh, in in uh, New South Wales, we have a um, train ticket system that was introduced a few years ago, and one person early on um, wanted to implant the chip into their hand, and it was like a whole news story. And then I think they got told to remove it, but then like now it's starting to become socially acceptable to do that. And it's like, did you just not want? Did you want to just as a business control that, or did you not genuinely not want the people to do that? Because now it's I think happening. they didn't want to have anything bad. So, like say you know the the chip rots in their skin yeah. and causes them to get some blood infection and die. And they'll be like opal card causes death on some rando. I mean, but like they can, they they know that they never intended people to put it inside. Themselves, yeah, for sure. So. But still, it's just the bad bad publicity. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Which is, I think, wouldn't wouldn't work. Yeah, I don't know. I definitely wouldn't be doing it. That's for sure. No, nah, that's not that's not for me. Yeah. Um. How far are we in? How many minutes are we in, do you think? Um, we're definitely over that. I reckon we're near an hour. I think, yeah, I think we're, um, we should, think we should wrap it up. That's good. That's good. All right. Um, anything we want to say when we leave? I got nothing today, but, um, maybe next, maybe next time. Until next time. Until next time, guys. Thank you for but listening. Look, thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of our podcast. If you're listening the whole way through, big, big, thumbs up and big thank you from us and um if you have any feedback about the audio let us know we're still um working this stuff out yeah let us know however that it's good or bad yes um but we love you guys if you're watching and we'll see you in the next one for our cookie stories on double dose thank you for listening don't forget to like and subscribe see you guys see ya bye